Okay, now let's talk a bit more about the range function. And for the sake of illustration, let's create a list with five elements. And let's just go with x list is equal to the list of strings consisting of just one character strings, a, b, c, d, and e. And now let's use a for loop to print each element. And we know we could do something like for item in x list. We could just print the item and there they are, the five elements of x list. But now let's assume that we want to print each element together with its index. And here's one thing we could do. Outside of the loop, we could initialize an accumulator or this identifier index to zero. And then we could say for item in x list. And now let's print the index and the item, but let's increment that index, that accumulator. So we'll just accumulate a count. So add to index 1 and assign that back to index. And here we get the five elements of x list together with the indices. Let's try another approach. Let's create a list that we'll call indices. And it has the integer values 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. So the five integer values that represent the valid indices of x list. And now let's say for index in the list of indices, what we'll do is print the index and now use explicit indexing. So we'll say x list with an index of index. And now when we hit return twice, we again get the five elements of x list together with their corresponding indices. That works, but what if we had a list with a million elements? We wouldn't want to create by hand this indices list, which lists the individual index for each element. What else can we do? Well, this video is about the range function, so the range function can come to our rescue and generate all the valid indices for us. Let's go back and look at what the range function gives us when we just give a stop value of 5 and we use the list function to see all at once the integers that range generates and there's the list 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, the valid indices for x list. But we could be a little bit more clever about this. We could say range function, we want you to produce a certain number of values but that value is based on the length of x list, which happens to be 5. But if x list had 6 elements, for example, if we took x list and appended to that the character f, or the string f, now let's go back and recall that range function where its argument is obtained from the length of x list. And now we again get all the valid indices for x list when x list has 6 elements. Now recall that we could use the range function directly as the iterable in the header of a for loop. When we do that, we do not put it as the argument of the list function. So let's write another version of our loop to show all the elements of x list together with the corresponding indices for each element. So we could say for i in range of the length of x list, and what we want to do is print i and then x list with an index of i and when we hit return twice now we see the six elements in x list together with the corresponding indices as an exercise in thinking about the use of various things we've learned so far here is a little challenge using a single for loop how would you write each element of x list concatenated with the next element in the list. And as a reminder, here is x list. And what we want to do is on one line write the first and second elements, so a and b. The next one should have b and c. This would be followed by c and d, then d and e, then e and f. But when we get to f, that should be paired with the first element of the list. So the very last line of output should be f and a. 
Recall that there is an arithmetic operator that could help us out with this challenge and we can use it to ensure that an arithmetic expression never yields a result that's outside the range of valid indices for a list. For example, 14 is beyond the range of valid indices for x list, but if we took this modulo, the length of x list, then we get 2. That's within the range of valid indices. Or if we said 4i in range of, let's go with 15, and now we just print i modulo the length of x list, we see the output cycles through the valid indices for x list. We could use modulo in our solution to this particular challenge. We could say 4i in the range with an argument, the length of x list, and what we will do is print x list with an index of i. We'll concatenate that to x list with an index of an expression i plus 1 modulo the length of x list. So the argument of the print function is the concatenation of two things. One is x list with an index of i, and i is taking on the values 0 through 5. The second thing in this concatenation is x list, and if we just had i plus 1 as the index, it would be the next element in the list, and that would be fine until i got to 5, representing the last valid index for the list. If we had i plus 1, that's 6, and that's out of range, but by doing this modulo, taking this modulo, the length of the list, then 6 modulo 6 is 0, and we wrap around back to the first element. So let's hit return twice and see if we get the desired pattern, and sure enough, we do. And we'll stop there, but hopefully you're starting to develop a feeling for some of the ways in which the range function proves useful.